Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and in today's video I'm using a Deuce Gorgon Monster High doll to create Frankenfurter from the movie Rocky Horror Picture Show. For the content today, I'll be showing you the full process, including how I modified his feet, made the shoes, the costume, the face up, and styled the hair. So I'm getting started on the feet. Uh, Frankenfurter from the movie Rocky Horror Picture Show definitely needs to be able to wear high heels. So to do that, I used my heat gun. This is a very old heat gun, but it's very reliable. It was hand, handed down to me from my mother-in-law a while back, and I've used it quite a bit. And so here I, I've heated up the foot, and then I'm using, um, being very careful because if it's too hot, of course I can burn myself, but I would wait for it to cool just slightly to make sure I could touch it. And then I'm also using this Mod Podge, it's sort of like a thimble, to help me be able to touch areas that are extra hot. So I'm also using these tweezers to mold it and just kind of holding it into shape. The way that it needed to bend was that the, the toes kind of bent up and then there also needed to be like an arch where that the heel was able to be straight down and wouldn't look weird with a heel. Then once I did that, I glued the ankles. Um, it wasn't going to be able to stand if it was going to be quite wobbly if the ankles were movable, so I did use some super glue to make sure that the ankles didn't move. Now here I'm taping some foil to the feet and using them as sort of a mold. This is uh, how I sculpted the heel of the shoe and I used epoxy sculpt. So equal parts of each, molded them together, and then just began sculpting a heel. So I'm switching over to the corset. I, I did sculpt the heel and then while that was drying, I worked on the corset, so we'll get back to the shoes later. So I didn't use a pattern here, I just kind of uh, held, held the uh, fabric up to the doll and did some cutting or shaping with a pencil or drawing with a pencil to try to get the right shape and then sewed it together. I guess I've made enough shirts and things that I can kind of eyeball it. So the front part was, the front of the corset was in two parts. And the back was as well. So I could snap it in the back. We'll put that aside and get back to it later. Uh, now that the shoes were dry, the molded part I was able to work on the strap that goes in the front. So what I'm doing here is I'm using some double stick tape to stick on these pieces of vinyl because I want to have a piece of vinyl go over the top and then glue them underneath that piece of vinyl which is kind of act acting as the insole of the shoe and then I would glue that on top of the heel, as you can see there. Then I also put on a little back piece as well and glued the shoe part, or the clay part, or I'm sorry, painted the shoe part. They looked a little wonky to me, so I decided to add some Mod Podge and glitter, and I'm really glad that I did because it made them look a lot better. If you guys want to know how to make shoes, there's I, I later on <laughs> realized that I should have checked out her channel. She makes the most amazing shoes, and they're so clean and beautiful. But it's a Walker Colors. Yeah, I'm sure most of you are following her, but if you're not, definitely check her out because she makes the most amazing, detailed, tiny little shoes. And if I'd watched one of her videos, I'm sure these would have looked a lot better. <laughs> so I'm using this very fine glitter from Martha Stewart's collection. After this point I added a little gem to the heel to give it a little bit more height and it looked really kind of like a neat addition and then I also uh, trimmed or trimmed up the front of the shoe and stitched it up a little bit to make it better a better fit and it turned out a little bit better but those were quite difficult to make shoes on my first try, I don't know that I'll do it again. 
Um, but I really, it really made me appreciate the talent of Walker Colors. Like I mentioned, she makes so many beautiful shoes and I don't know how she has the patience. So I added some trim around the corset and right now it's snapped in the back and what I'm doing is just adding the laces. I'm just sewing those in. I just used some like cross stitch or uh, embroidery th uh, floss or I think that's what it call it's called. It's like a thread for embroidery. So it's several pieces thick and then I waxed it with some it's called magician's wax. Um, it's the kind of wax that I do to add to my thread to make it not fray as easily and get knotted up. So I, I ran that through some wax and here I'm just tying off the ends. So the shorts, I made my standard pair of shorts just a tiny bit bigger to fit um, the male doll and then added some lace to the top of those to match the character. Here I'm trimming them down a good bit so I can leave some room between, I want to leave some room between the shorts and the top that you can see a little bit of his belly and then also add some lace. So I just cut this lace, the lace on the character in the movie looked a little bit jagged so I just cut this around and, tr and tacked it to the top of the shorts. So we'll get back to the final look in a little bit so you can see how it all came together. I'll also show a little bit about how I made the garter belts. So onto the face up. I'm a little bit further along here. I think I was having some camera issues so I apologize but I started him as usual with four coats of Mr. Super Clear and then I started with the eyes eye shape with white. So of course check out my other videos to get some better footage of how I start the general face up. And then I'm using some Rembrandt soft pastel to add this dark color burgundy to the lips and then I outlined them with black and here I'm just doing some shading and blending. I used some reference photos of Tim Curry as the character on online to just get a better idea of how to shape the lips. I would have liked to do some of his other expressions but uh, given the mold that I was using I was kind of limited. He has such really neat expressions but I think it kind of it turned out okay. So here I'm kind of blending a couple of reds from my Schmanky and Sennelier and Rembrandt soft pastels to get the perfect shade of blush for this character. I did some contouring with a darker burnt sienna color and then I'm going over that jawline a bit with the blush. And here I'm starting out with his iconic eyeshadow. I was a little nervous here because of course the the shape needed to be just right just so you could recognize him right away that the eyeshadow like I said it's very iconic and it makes his whole look almost. So each year I attend the Mad Monster Party in Charlotte, North Carolina. Well, I think one year it was in South Carolina, but it's the Mad Monster Party Carolina, and it's a sort of a monster or horror convention, and it's one of our favorites. I'm not like the biggest horror fan, but I like monster movies, and we just love this convention because not only are the people that attend just so fun and nice, and we just have a blast, and, and the vendors are really cool too. We just have a really good time. So we attended it for several years and then we started doing a table with my dolls 
and just have the greatest time. So we're going again this year and I hope I will have the time. I have a ton of commissions I'm trying to work through at the same time of uh, trying to prepare for the convention. So I hope that I have time to make a larger uh, collection for this one. But this is the first one that I'm making and it has been on my list for a long time to make a Frankenfurter doll. If you're not familiar with the movie, it's a sort of a cult classic movie. And the movie itself it played for plays has been playing for several years in theaters and it's just one of the most fun movies to attend because when you do you bring certain props and people actually act out the movie during while the time at the same time as it's playing they dress up and it's just a blast and one year actually at the mad monster party the actual actors from the movie as, aside from susan sarandon and um tim curry weren't, weren't there but the majority of the other actors were and they acted it out on stage with some of the um, acting troupe that does it in charlotte and it was just amazing it was one of the best experiences we've had so if you guys ever have a chance to go to the Mad Monster Party, I highly suggest it. It's super fun. But the convention won't always have that particular experience, but there are always some fun, exciting experiences to be had there. So we're looking forward to this year. So if you're in the area and you stop by the table, please say hello. So here I'm shading up the ear detail. And I just spent a lot of time trying to refine the details on this piece, the lines in the forehead and under the eyes. And I tried to, as usual, maintain my style, but make it as close to the character as I can. I find that the longer I've been doing this, the more often I'm trying to work on getting them to look more like the character and moving away a little bit from my style, but I always try to maintain it a little bit. Using a few different browns in the eyes. And by the way, thank you guys so much for all the wonderful comments, the sweet comments, and all your questions and everything on my last few videos especially there were just so many really super nice comments and I really appreciate it so here I'm trying to shade I was doing a little bit of shading in the eye I found on some of my previous dolls I look at them and it looks like the eyeball is flat and I really want to make sure that my eye that I'm paying attention to the fact that an eyeball is a ball and I don't want them to look as flat as usual so as they have been so I'm trying to do a little bit of shading around the edges to make sure it reflects the fact that it's a ball in there and not a flat shape. I hope that made sense, but I just have noticed that some of my previous dolls, the eyes looked very flat. I'm doing some shading with this pencil on the inside lips to try to give an give the impression that he's kind of giving almost a kiss face I'm trying to just capture a little bit of that character of Tim Curry in this movie in the expression So 
So I'm using this Prismacolor black for the eyelashes. I was usually using Faber-Castell, the Aqua or Art Grip because of the hard lead, but I ran out of that, so now I'm using the Prismacolor because it's a little bit harder than Derwent and maintains a better point. So going in with those lashes. Almost happy with how he looks, just adding a little bit more detail. Once I do that, then I'll add some shading to the upper lid and some highlights in the eyes. And then of course, the last part of the face up is that I seal it about five, four or five uh, coats of Mr. Super Clear Flat UV Cut Varnish, and then I'll add gloss to the eyes and lips. I added some uh, Liquitex High Gloss Varnish to the eyes and lips, and extra coats to the lips. Added a little bit of acrylic highlighting to the lips. I just wanted to accentuate the gloss with that. So onto the hair. So I rooted him with some soft alpaca yarn and thinned it out and brushed it out to get it to shed as much as possible. And now I'm just giving him an overall uh, uh, one length haircut. So I'm just kind of cutting the same length over the entire head. So you pull it out straight from the scalp. It's kind of like um, Cosmetology School 101, where you pull the hair out directly straight out from the scalp in all areas around the head and cut it all the same length. Just kind of appeared to me that that was the haircut that he had. And I was just kind of judging the length of the sides being careful that I didn't cut them too short and I'm going a little bit longer than I want it to because one I have to curl the hair and then so it's going to shrink up and two I can't remember what two was <laughs> but I'm making it a little bit longer because I knew that I was going to curl it so once it looks like it's the same length all over then I'm going to take these, these are thinning shears, these are kind of my secret tip there is that I use these thinning shears, shears to thin, cut all over the head and pull out extra weight. Now I'm using this gel, this is just a, like a, a hard uh, holding gel from the Dollar Tree. And then this is a tip that I learned from Hexian. He's another YouTuber that is uh, super popular, so I'm sure you know who he is, but um, he had shown in several of his videos to do his curling of the hair. He heats up this, um, these metal chopsticks and, and curls the hair that way. And I was so surprised how well it worked because I was using Q-tips to curl tight curls on the dolls, and this was time-consuming but it really worked worked well and it held it so thank you Hexian if you guys aren't watching his videos you definitely should I'm, I'm sure you guys know who he is so I'm trying not to comb through too much at this point I think I've shed it uh, shedded out all the hair that I could possibly get out but um, I just I don't want it to look too brushed out I want it to look a little bit messy and finger styled so I did a little bit of trimming after this to get the shape where I wanted it um, particularly on the sides I needed them to be a little bit shorter But otherwise it the length turned out just right. Took a lot of time to do his hair, more time than it appears to in this video. <laughs> I'm 
And in a moment I'll show the final look all pulled together. I added him some eyelashes as well. I don't think I mentioned that earlier. And these little garters. I used some black uh, cording and some little wire to wrap around some beads that are attached to the net stockings. Um, I ended up gluing them because I felt like I wasn't going to be able to keep them on and I thought that they could come on and off even if they were attached so I, I was fine with that. And adding the gloves and hands and we're just about finished. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. <laughs> I know it was a little wild of a character. I just totally love the movie. It was It's just a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate you watching and all of your comments. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.